we never do the beginning at the beginning. We never do the beginning at the beginning. We always use the show as a warm up, and then we know what to talk about in the intro, and it's never anything specific. But uh, we do the end at the end because when it's over, it's over. But we never do the beginning at the beginning. And that That's way, weird. <laughs> the end is at the end, but the beginning's not the beginning. In that way, it's oddly unsatisfying <laughs> because. By the time I've sat here for an hour doing an episode with you, I'm actually ready to be done sitting next to you. What was that you were saying today? It's like, ah, I gotta get my shit together. <laughs> yeah. Before we recorded. Yeah. Because you were like, what are you doing all day? <laughs> yeah, right. You, oh, you, 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 you got the camera working. That's all you did today? Oh, well, yeah, you were talking about this other that thing. That was maximum yeah. effort. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you doing? Like, what... Uh, sulking? <laughs> but... It's full time. You're like, I need a break. And I'm like, what break from what? I need, what like, is, a... What? Nothing's happened. Mental... Nothing's... What I need is a psychiatrist. Uh, but I, I don't have the time, energy... The time? Money. That's what That's what you keep saying. I don't have the time. You got nothing but time. I mean, yeah. in that... I waste all of it, in so that it's you're... gone. <laughs> in that you're going to be dead soon... You don't have yeah. time. I mean, the clock is ticking. Really, I don't have the energy or motivation. <laughs> right. So, but you have the time. If you had the energy and or motivation, you would make the time. I'm not and sure. And that's my inspirational speech of the day. But it's mostly that I don't have. Mostly the money. that it is. <laughs> I'm poor, <laughs> and so I just. Hey, you know we're supposed to stop post... touching me. <laughs> stop touching me when you we're talk. We're supposed to pose the question, right? Because we're social media influencers. We're supposed to say it be, you know, hey, tell us what you think. So I'm going to pose a question. Can you do me a favor? Do I look more handsome without my glasses? <laughs> tell us what you think. Tweet about it. Send us emails. Talk, discuss it in the group. Brad, this is not going to go how you want it to go. Also, can you please stop referring to... Oh, yes, is I'm going to delete the nose. <laughs> can you stop referring to us publicly as influencers? Because we're not... <laughs> and don't... I, I, I have never... Influencing. I've never fucking said the word, I want to be an influencer, but you keep saying, we're <laughs> influencers! Because it's ridiculous. <laughs> I think the concept is ridiculous. Yeah, but stop saying and then it. we're trying... The to... more you say it, the more people are going to think that we doing... really feel that way. I mean... I would like to influence you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. <laughs> Two more three podcast. Uh, take 83. And action. Oh, that was bad. And action. Yep, that was it. That was the one. Um, well, uh, this is uh, Film Reverie. We call this, uh, we've come up with a great name for this show. What's that? Film Reverie Live. Oh. That way you know what show it is, and you know that at one point in time it was live. Yeah, and also, if you hear this on the audio version, you'll be jealous. Yeah, jealous. And part of it being, the good news of it being in video, is that every now and then you get to see Emma. Or, and maybe the cat. And maybe the cat somewhere. Which just hits Emma, the Emma. Emma and the cat, Jeffrey Lebowski. Or is it, the, anyway. The cat is Jeffrey, yes. Yeah, the cat is Jeffrey Lebowski. Which we don't... I mean, calling him Jeffrey doesn't work, so what, we just call him... I'll just call him Lebowski. I just say or I call Or I call him Little Dude. You know, the Little Lebowski Urban Achievers. I sh- yeah, I should say Little Dude. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, the, Ur- the, the Achievers. Yes, yes, the Little Lebowski Urban Achievers. Yeah, I'm yeah. proud we are of all of them. Yeah, you can sort of see. Yeah, there you go. There we go. There's the annoying little... <laughs> he wants to go back down. Okay. Um, so, yes, this is our second... We, we could call this our second episode, official episode of yeah. Film Reverie, where we're doing video version as lo- uh, and live, as well as the audio podcast version. Yeah. This is the 83rd episode of Film Reverie overall. We're going to talk... We're going to start a whole series this week. I mean, this episode on... Um, the episodes where we do them together, like just you and me, without any... Oh, yeah. Without a guest, we're going to go through pre-production for uh, indie, or we, you could, I mean, the only yeah. pre-production we've, you know, really done. Yeah, I wouldn't call what is, we do pre-production. This is no budget <laughs> pre-production. But, uh, so we we are going to start a whole thing on pre-production. Uh, 
not that again restating that we are not experts clearly but we have made it through this process and we learned some stuff on the way uh, stuff that we knew that we still didn't do right and stuff that we had never been through before since we'd never done a feature film that uh kind of ran away from us and we learned what not to do and uh, a couple of things we we did right um all the way really all the way up to the end of pre-production we did a couple of things right um which is mostly in the script writing because we knew we wouldn't we 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 wanted it we just decided let's make this as simple as we can on ourselves yeah later well yeah we wrote a we wrote a script that we could have we that should have been easy to produce yeah and when we got down to the production of it uh it was easier to produce than if we had worked out some sort of like action movie or something like that so uh one of the things we're gonna do is uh so this week, this episode, we're basically just going to summarize the concept of pre-production and some uh, helpful, like, what I would call big picture, you know I'm talking about, like, big picture tips and bits of information. So, mm-hmm. um, part of the thing is pre-production is, is where you do all of your, you set yourself up for success or failure. Um, if your production, if your pre-production isn't, sound it's very likely that you're going to have nothing but chaos on set and pre-production because you didn't have stuff figured out there's a minimum level of pre-production you need to do uh even on an indie film with a small crew otherwise it it will be chaos because you're going to indie films films in in and of themselves uh are invite chaos because of the creative medium and all Mm. the people but then when you're doing indie film with no money you're even inviting even more so i that's why i think like we mentioned before it's important in your script to write it with that in mind of simplifying making it easy for locations or whatever or for things to change yeah you don't always have to write your script uh with production in mind but if you're writing your script with the idea with the idea that you are going to produce it in some independent way you have to be thinking of uh you have to be thinking of budgetary constraints, yeah. even in the creative process. Locations you have access to, um, and maybe, like, well, we're talking about pre-production. The script mm-hmm. breakdown is one of the things, uh, when you write a script, you have to, if you do it right, you're supposed to go through and find all, you know, there's a, they're sitting down watching TV and clicking the channel, also then they need a remote, so I, you know, uh, there's a coffee cut, so there's, Mm-hmm. Somebody has to break that down, and what all things do I need? Because they might have to buy some things. Yeah. So we made sure that we wrote it in a way that because like, whatever location we got, yeah. whatever house, you're yeah. gonna have a TV yeah. and a remote and a couch. And For a couch. us, one of the things that we did that at the time we thought, no, oh, this will be this will be <laughs> easier to do. Um, the one of the things that we did uh, that did help us was uh, the concept for our film was a something that took place in a 20 in one long day like a 24 hour period so right there we solved i mean inadvertently we solved the uh the location problem there weren't a whole lot of locations with it we solved the wardrobe problem we solved a lot of prop issues because it wasn't some big huge action movie they were going on this was a comedy drama that was sort of self-contained in literally there was the main house there was the car and there was the park. There's like three or four locations. There's like four locations in the whole thing. And there's one main location where I would say 80% of our film takes place in. Right. We use that whole location, like shoot this thing in this corner over here so we can just move around a little bit and not be feeling like we're seeing the same four walls the whole time. So we did that. But so that's something that did work for us that we did in, in the script part. We also wrote something that we knew would be easier to shoot no matter what we were doing because it was people talking. It was like a drama with a lot of dialogue and a lot of... Um, one thing that that d- didn't solve, though, was that relies really heavily on your actors. That leans, that puts a lot of weight right. and pressure on your actors to be off book, to be prepared, to be right. professional it's, and uh, on time and just ready to go. That's another part of pre-production, which will... We'll have another episode yeah. on that. Uh, we'll go in depth on right. some of these other things. So, um, so, but because of that, it's very important if you're going to have 
if you're going to lean on your actors yeah. for it, because the idea was to have long scenes uncut. We didn't want to have all these different angles. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't, we weren't able to have all of the actors up mm-hmm. to that level. Yeah. Uh, well, some, some of them were, others weren't. It was just ultimately, I think it was for us, and we'll go way, way, way into detail on this uh, at some point. Yeah. But uh, for us, it was uh, 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 a preparation thing. A sometime, sometimes the actors were overwhelmed, and that that is a pre that is a production yeah. problem. Our o- actors were overwhelmed because two of we, them it was their first. Like, it was their first like feature film, and then we showed up saying we're shooting fifteen pages today. I hope you're off book, and then we just started shooting. Um, we did prepare them for we, it. It's not like we showed up and didn't warn them. Right. They we had about a two we had about a two month. Uh, yeah. build up to production and we had but, rehearsals where we met with them and walked them through yeah, it yeah. i mean they had plenty of warning but still um as overwhelmed as we were as filmmakers the actors were also overwhelmed because we're shooting 15 pages today and by the way tomorrow we're shooting 15 more or eight well, there was one day where we went from shooting 12 pages on one day and the next day we had in mind which didn't quite happen to shoot 18 pages so is a lot if it was a play, they would have had to know all their words in order. <laughs> but it was a film, and it's chaos, and we were doing these 12, 15, 18-hour days. And, you, by the way, you're not paying. We weren't, we weren't at the time, paying anybody. Uh, we, were, we were working with a small crew. There were literally no more than four people on, on the crew at any given time. Maybe five. I think it was five. Most times it was me, Brad, and I'm directing, so I'm not doing anything with any of the equipment. Brad's running around pulling his hair out, making sure sound is good, organization is good. What scene are we doing next? He's basically ADing, and DP and sound guy. If we were lucky, we had a PA. Yeah. So yeah. Um, most times we did have a PA. So we had about five people on us the whole time. However, all that stuff pre-production is be organized, set yourself up for success because if you don't, and it doesn't mean you're gonna fail. It just means that you're not setting yourself up for success. Well-produced films are chaotic on set sometimes. It just is the nature of the beast. Like, film production is an accident waiting to happen. It's like a runaway train, and you have to... How good are you at, like, r- running alongside the train and jumping up on top, on, you know, like they do in, like, Midnight Run and stuff, and they're catching, like, how good are you at doing that all day, every day, right? So... Mm-hmm. Um, did we freeze? Are we skipped? Did we go off? There we go. Okay. Cut that out. I'll let okay. it out. I'll let it that out, Brad. Good. We had a little it's glitch. It's because we're streaming and recording. Right, and so it's... that's good. Um, so all that stuff, if you're organized, you're setting yourself up for sex. Just, just know that now. You need to find somebody. Really, what it is, we are creative dudes. We're like writers, directors, yes. producers. We love the making of the thing. Um, what we're so we're naturally good. You send us. You say, go write a script about this. We're like, we are on that shit right now. You know, okay, a month later, we got they got yeah. the script. C- creating and, and even problem solving. Like, one of my favorite things was on set. Like, what's wrong? Yeah. Okay, and then I would fix it, and it, yeah. that was so much fun. But what's not fun so we, is, so what you're saying script, is things like the script <laughs> break down. What you're saying is we're good at creating <laughs> the problem and solving the problem. But not managing the problem, like pre or organizing pre or, organizing the problem, right? Yeah. Um, so phone calls, paperwork. Phone uh, calls and paperwork <laughs> is that like really also also I think I was thinking about this. I think we should cut ourselves just a little bit of slack because we were we were also shooting eighteen pages, fifteen pages a day. We were also trying to shoot fifteen pages tomorrow, and we shot hundred and fifteen pages in nine days. Which, by the, the by the way, the thing that did save us was you did a shot list. Yeah, I had a sh- I had the whole film shot listed. Yeah. Before we started shooting. So that's if if you, you make sure you at least have a shot list. However, our main location fell through the night before we started shooting, so I had to reshot list the whole eighty percent of the film that is true. as we went because it was a completely different location. Mm-hmm. So the shots didn't add up to the same the same way. A lot of them did, but I had to go through the whole script one last time the night before production and start doing at that point, even though I'd prepped the whole thing, I we had to do the whole thing scene by scene because there was no way I was gonna make it through the whole script on that one night while we had to be up at four o'clock in the morning, you know? So what you really need is somebody who 
is good at that stuff. There are people out there, believe it or not, Brad, there are people out there who love doing the paperwork. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not you and it's not me. We're not necessarily, mm-hmm. it's not our strong suit, but I mean, we, we Forrest Gumped our way through it pretty good. But um, there are people out there that like thrive on that. They They want to make that. 20 phone calls they want to yeah. get the release thing worked up and type it up and make it just perfect and all that stuff yeah. and they, they're not i mean they're not necessarily they don't have to be ocd necessarily but there are people that like i love just sitting down being to myself and doing all of this stuff uh we are not those people <laughs> um, which is why it's important to have money yeah. so you can hire people to do that part that you're not good at i will say that we are better at it having gone through the fire a little bit Yes. But we still, if I, if someone asked me what I do, I, I don't default and say, I'm a producer. I say, I'm a writer director. I have produced <laughs> I have things. Produced. Yeah. But I am not a producer. Yeah. Um, Which, and we'll go in depth. Uh, in fact, we're, we'll break down to make it easier for you. It's because I assume most people watching this are indie filmmakers. Um, so we'll, we're going to break down, what is it, thinking styles? Yeah, thinking so that, styles. So that you know what to look for in a producer. Yeah. Because uh, there are people that are, you know, one, two, three, yeah. four, and then there are people who are like uh, sequential thinkers, three-dimensional thinkers. We'll do a whole thing on that um, just because it's important, I think, as a director, assistant director, as the leader of the film, as the leaders, because there's, you know, you need the chain of command. Which we talked about. Have we talked about Chain of Command? Not not a whole lot. Well, d- maybe we'll fit that yeah. in another episode. Let them go in our production episode. Yeah. Production stuff. Um, but uh, it's, so anyway, it's really good. Um, you, you need to know, uh, you need to be able to recognize in other people, oh, this person ha- thinks this way and mm-hmm. would be perfect to, you know, paperwork. Or yeah. this person would be more better suited for this mm-hmm. other thing. You're trying to get a film made. And a film is crazy, chaos. Even a well-organized one is full of, there's a thousand questions you have to answer every single day. Things that you thought you knew the answer to. Like we were saying with our location. We had our location figured out. Is our main location. It's one of our actor's spots. uh, One of our actor's uh, apartments. And we were going to shoot there. We were able to live there. Then literally at like 6 o'clock the night before our production, we were doing our last walkthrough. We got a, we left, and then five minutes later, the actor called us and said, oh, my roommate realized that you guys are going to be here for four or five days. Even though we definitely Hi. said that before. He's like, he didn't realize yeah. you're going to be here all day for... So he said no, and we're like, shit. So we had all those questions answered. We had communicated the thing to the guy, and the guy said okay. And then he goes, oh, wait a minute, you you really meant that? And we're like, yeah. So apparently the actor who we were working with had done a lot of things in the apartment before, but there were like student films and stuff like that right. that that weren't coming in with this massive amount of like probably, baggage. Probably short films. That yeah, were short films that were done in a day or so. Yeah, so. Um, and and by, the, by the way, the... Um, the the actor was a superstar. We've talked about the per, haven't we in a yeah, previous episode yeah, about yeah. the characters. So yeah. in real life, it was a charismatic uh, yeah. superstar. And um, what we would call in our character matrix a sleepy or a charisma or a charisma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I say superstar, but yes, because I'm trying to change the language because we we like the uh, what does it call it the seven doors the seven doors. Oh, we don't want Disney to sue us. Uh, anyways, but it, I feel like I feel like it's one of those things where we should have known, but we're so busy, uh, you know, running around. But it's hard to, you know, figure out. Every, that's the, the, by the way, that's why it's important to put a team together. We're talking about pre-production. The more people you have supporting you, yeah. the better, because when you have, it's just the two of us having to do everything and figure it all out. Mm-hmm. Things. You know, go by the... With with no budget, no time, no all that stuff. However, um, what happened with us is is then our actor, so our, that, that guy who... I mean, we had communicated with the other guy that lived there, specifically. We'd spoken to that person. And then the day before our production, like weeks in advance, day before our production, that particular guy was like, oh, you were serious about it being that much time? It's like, yeah. when am I going to sleep and all that stuff? So then we had to bail out. But then that same actor went off and got us 
another location at the absolute last minute. Like literally called us back an hour later and said, I got another space. It's in the same building. Um, this person's going to. And we we did what everybody in a situation like that does or anybody in that situation would do is we we th- went straight to the best case scenario in our minds. We figured it out in such a way so that it um, was good news at the time. And it was great news at the time. However, yeah. we didn't then we didn't follow up on it and f- figure out all the things that could go wrong from there. So what happened is our actor went off and sold the concept of us shooting this film in right. this person's loca- in which, this person's house. Which just to throw in, uh, being a charismatic uh, personality, yeah. they are uh, they are good, well suited. <laughs> At being able to, you know, convince people of things. They that's, might... <laughs> that's exactly what we said at the time. Oh, man, he went at, like, it would have taken us days to find a new spot. This guy walked in and schmoozed charmed this, like, charmed this lady. Into, yeah. And, but then also conveniently left out all the gory details of, yes, we'll be here till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Right. And then he told us she was fine with all that stuff, but didn't tell her about all that stuff. So charismatic personalities will sometimes tell people what they want to hear. So <laughs> and then we were there for 4 days and we'd spoken to the location owner, the person who we were there for 3 or 4 days before we even knew that there was that he had flubbed on some of this stuff. Right. Um because the last night he comes in going uh, Becca Meyer, we, we got to get all this stuff shot by like midnight <laughs> because she's pissed and I'm like pissed at what? We'd spoken to her. Well, I'd, there's I'd... been two people yelling in the room for the last two hours, saying every kind of profanity you can imagine. I'm, Dude, I'm just saying. I was like mad about what? I said just two days ago, I walked over and I gave her a hug and I thanked her for letting us be here. And I'm like, and I even told her, you will be tired of us by the time we leave. I really, I really appreciate the the sacrifice you're making for us. And she said, no, no, no problem, no problem. He'd still just not been wholly clear with her about yeah. how much time we were going to take up in her space anyway so communication no matter what level you're at you have a million dollars 10 million dollars if you have 300 million dollars to produce your film why would we even have used 300 million dollars like we would have had to blow some shit up anyway if you had 300 million dollars to to make your film you still need to have a level of communication and organization um so that you're not killing your shit before you even get the shit you know what i mean this is why you need to find a good producer yes and uh and you need a good team around you Uh, i call it a mastermind group you can call it a team but you need you need a filmmaking mastermind group if you're an an indie filmmaker director writer whatever producer uh, whatever it is you you need to make a team or uh, at the very least a a community you know people that you you help them out that way you can call in a favor and they help you out. You really need to solve every problem you can possibly think of. And this is where experience comes in. Because the great producers are people that have been through it a hundred times, thousand times. Yeah. And they have thought of everything that could go wrong because they've seen everything go wrong on productions and before. And we've been through a lot of everything going wrong. Yeah. We had, we've had we had a lot of experience. In, yeah. This is, and well, things going wrong. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why we were kind of able to do this guerrilla style yeah. because we knew uh, all the, we, we knew at the very minimum uh, we need to at least have these things this yeah. way. <laughs> and we, and we did have those things. We had those things and we, we had our production set up so that once we got on set, everything kind of went smoothly. We had stuff falling off the sides like the whole time, but our productions went pretty smoothly. Yeah. Because that's what we'd been, we'd had, we'd, we'd gotten better over the years at being on set. He knew that what I was going to need in the next shot, he went and got that because he, we'd done that before. I spent all my time in between takes figuring yeah. out uh, how to what, what I needed for the next thing and setting it up. Yeah. So I was sort of an AD. By the way, I'm not a good AD because ADs need to be the taskmasters, and uh-huh. uh, I I'm, was more of a creative producer. Yeah. I, I could figure it out and make it happen, but as far as you know, uh, uh-huh. the what do you call it? The I, I'm not a good assistant director, but I did play the role. Yeah. 
for dude, the set. Dude, that was that was one of the saving graces of the entire production. And I'm not gonna blow smoke up your ass here on in front of <laughs> ones of people, but wait, you blow vape up. My <laughs> blow ass. vape up your ass. But yeah, I mean you you did. Like the fact that we had written the script together and had had this thing not happen three previous times. Yeah. We both we didn't have to really communicate we didn't we were right. telepathically connected. because we visualized it together mm -hmm. and uh we discussed so like for example you're in the living room shooting a scene i was i was in the other room doing set design because we had already like the day or two before had looked at it and and i after the, i i just came up with ideas in my head based on what was there i kind of imagined the three-dimensional space in my head and i was like what is this so when i got there i sort of had uh, I had it in my head of sort of what I wanted it to look like. So I'm setting it all up while they're doing that. And then uh, in between takes, I'd be like, uh, take a look at this. Is this good? And, and then Mike would say, well, uh, put this here, do that. So I was fixing things while he's doing that so that we could move into the next room, um, which is, but, and that was fun. You want to <laughs> talk about fun. Yeah. Uh, having no seconds to spare <laughs> just running, okay, that's done, you got that, and then, hey, Dude. you, do this, and then... <laughs> we'll, so we'll talk about it later, but there are a couple of nights on this that were literally hanging on by a thread. And this, when we get in, when we got into post-production, there was this one sequence of our film, it was like a 20-minute, it was basically 20% of our film. There was a big 15, like, 18-minute section of our film that we literally were getting... The one shot we needed, move on. Next shot, and it was the longest day I'd ever had in my life. And when we got into post production, there was two sections of this thing that were stitched together by one take of one shot. And if we didn't have oh. the other thing, we weren't sure how to put it together. And it was missing uh, when when I first sat down and I'd finally yeah. gotten through all yeah. the shots in the uh, I forget what you call. It's been so long, and uh, it's in post production. I had to the go. Emerging to, audio. Uh, well, I had to watch everything and listen to everything and, uh, what do you call it? Label it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if labeling is what you call it. It's a thing. There's a job you can get where <laughs> that's what you do is you organize everything. Yeah, the media management. Yeah. 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 So I got through everything and I'm like, dude. There's this section missing. <laughs> Where's yeah. this sh shot? Yeah. Yeah. Um. We. We. Yeah. I. I was already problem solving of how to rework the yeah. movie in a way to where we'd skip the part that needed that shot. Yeah. Um. But you. Uh. We. We. We had done our. Uh. What do you call it? We had done our jobs. Mm -hmm. It just so happened though that um, we forgot one night on the last take. Or. or uh, right. There, there was a whole SD card of footage missing before we left. Yeah. We were so tired, uh, we forgot to download it. Yeah, there's one thing we that left. there's one thing that didn't get saved to computer, right. and we were honestly really lucky. We that... were panicked because we thought because we it's a couple times yeah. we reused yeah. SD cards, so yeah. we'd make sure we download it and erase it. So you and I had like I think a day or at least a few hours of panicking mm -hmm. <laughs> while we were waiting. I'm still for... nervous about it, and I know that it all worked out. I'm listening to you now, and it's making my heart rate go up. I'm going to check right. my heart rate. So, um, which is why you want a little bit of a budget. We did a no-budget movie, okay? <laughs> We're saying you can. But I'm also saying get a little bit of a budget. Get a media manager person. That, that's all they do. Their yeah. job is to take the media, yeah. put it on the computer, check it, and, and back it up. The duplicate. All of that. Yeah. But yeah. when it's us, we had our camera person... Me and the camera person, it was our job to make yeah, no, sure. Yeah, I was doing parts of it too. Like, the camera I'm person the, was mine. I'm well. directing and also transferring media. And yeah. then we just all were just working. Anyway, and we'll sometimes get into... someone would forget. You need someone just for that. Not sometimes, that one time. That one time somebody somebody didn't transfer a card I, like we well, thought. Well, what I remember is we were all too tired and we said, well, we knew it would take an hour. Yeah. Because of how much was on it, Maybe so that's we what told, happened. we I said, "We'll do it. To, we'll get it tomorrow." Yeah, and we all forgot. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that part. All I remember is the panic-stricken nature of it all. Anyway, so what we're saying is, have all that stuff figured out before you walk on set, because once you walk on set, there's going to be a thousand new problems uh, all day, every day. 
And if you don't have your basic stuff worked out, by like location says we need to be out by midnight, uh, the crew needs to be done by whatever, food needs to happen between three and five today because this, this, and this, and blah, blah. The whole big party sequence you have with 18 extras showing up, uh, that's not going to start until 1030. So we, what are you going to shoot for those two hours in between dinner and the 1030 thing? Like, like you have to have all that stuff figured out so that when you walk on set and all of that stuff goes to shit, you then don't have twice the amount of things to figure out. Yeah, but it, along with Murphy's Law, just assume Murphy's Law is going to happen every time you mm-hmm. do a film, but also with everyone because of stress levels and maybe people go too long without food and blood sugar, whatever, uh, everyone loses brain cells at some point because something's happened, everyone's scrambling. you still waiting for yours to come back. <laughs> they die. <laughs> they're, they're not coming back. Uh, um, so you plan. That's why the more you plan, yeah. <laughs> the, the better. Is, yeah. What is it? Every two minutes spent in pre-production save. Oh wait, every minute spent in pre-production saves two minutes in production. Something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, um, another thing I learned. I think it was when we were teachers. Was the fast is slow and slow is fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I promise you, it is no. Yeah truer than when you're on a film set yeah fast I, is slow if you're if you're trying to run through if you don't take a step which is why we talk about meditation <laughs> if you don't take a few minutes oh. if you can't like notice oh my god okay mm-hmm. let me <laughs> you're going out of control let me take a step and you know meditate or get, get away mm-hmm. from this and focus if you don't do that uh you're you know you got to slow down is what i'm saying yeah. Yeah, that's a Stephen Covey thing, actually. Fast is slow and slow is fast. It is. Yeah. I well, I heard it. That. I first heard it in Seven Habits. Okay. So Seven the Habits. I, the idea is you you rush through on something because you don't have time to do it, and it ends up making taking twice as long right. as if you took the however long it takes to do it right the first time. Then you can go through it. So that's why processes work. Like this is what we do first, second, third, yeah. fourth, because that first couple of times when you're learning the process, the one, two, three, four, five steps might Okay, this, 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 and this. And then the next thing you know, it's been streamlined so much so that you don't have to think about those five things anymore. You can just jump straight to yeah. the sixth thing. And by the way, first things first is habit one of the seven habits. Yeah. And, and we, we got it. I don't We haven't done a seven habits of highly no. effective filmmakers, have we? No. We and, we then, <laughs> and then, but the flip side of that is if you rush through, you're totally fucking yourself for whatever thing. And I tell my students, I don't tell my students that they're fucking themselves, but... I tell my students all the you time. You never, never <laughs> tell them. They are fucking themselves. Oh, probably. But we can't talk about <laughs> right. it. They're also on drugs. Um, <laughs> but and vaping. And, but, yeah. but I tell my students that all the time. It's like, look, these you don't like pre-visualizing this stuff. You don't like thinking about it. But I promise you, if you, if you do, it will make shooting the thing go smoother because then you won't get back to the editing and realize, oh, we're missing a shot. You know, you might still have that happen, but you'll have that happen a lot less because you took the time to do it right. You followed the process, beginning, middle, end. Yeah. Now, shoot. That's why. That's why for us doing it over and over and over again is why it gets better and smoother. Yeah. Because you do the process over and over and over again, the process gets smoother. Then you can start trying new things in between there that you've never done before because you got this shit over here all figured out. You don't have to, what we should do is this. Okay, boom. Then what can we do that we haven't done before to to make it different? And I want to to add on to that. One of the things that I did, one of my strategies was, uh, because what you wanted was full, uh, okay, because I'm a melancholy personality type. I'm thinking about everything that could go wrong and worrying about it. And, And then because I'm aware of this i use it as a superpower and i try i i try and solve problems before they become problems um so one of the because you wanted to take uh right so you you wanted the actors to be able to go like 10 15 minutes you do a whole scene without cutting right in fact you had even said i don't want to get another camera angle 
I don't want a safety because yeah. I don't want to. You know, yeah. I don't want to give them the uh, the yeah. excuse of oh well we can cut to the thing right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I planned. I just assumed. <laughs> so I made sure no matter what was going on, I tried to at least get one more yeah. alternate take. Uh, I wasn't trying to shadow direct. No, and I, I wouldn't that's... say oh you know. Yeah. But I just made sure before we moved on to the next shot that. I had something with audio and video that no matter what was happening, that I had an alternate yeah. uh, to cut to through Well, that. we'll talk about the Beckemeyer meltdown days in, <laughs> in production. However, there's at least one instance where you convincing me to do that saved our ass in post-production. Yeah. And there's at least at least one instance. At least there's one. There's at least one. <laughs> and it was a big scene and a big thing and all that stuff. Um, you talking about the couch? No, I'm talking oh. about... Um, the car, the back seat oh, of the car. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. to pull, talk me off a ledge. You actually had to talk me off a ledge that day. We'll go into that story later. But, um, yeah, so. However, shooting some scenes, we had some scenes that were literally eight pages long of people driving. We didn't have. we. I knew also that we did not have time to shoot all that stuff if we had had to repo camera three times to shoot multiple angles and we mm. didn't have we didn't have enough cameras or camera mounts on that like driving in the yeah, car thing that was scary. where we could have put cameras on the car and shot all three takes all at once then we could have done that by the way as as you know uh, as my job being uh, seeing and hearing everything and making sure we have mm -hmm. what we need because i'm editing I, my my whole thing was i was the observer editing in my mind as everything was going and if I didn't think I could edit that together, I would take you aside and say, can we get one more? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. In the car scenes, I can't that be in the car. I have no idea if I could use any of and, this. And there was that one section. They don't know what we're talking about. but And there's that one section where literally we have one camera mounted on the on the dashboard of the car. Yeah. And, and the audio guys on the floor. And I'm <laughs> hiding out in the back seat of the car, hunched down, crouched over, with just listening to them. Ass a flapping. If we have, if the shot's out of focus, we don't know. If the shot's overexposed, we don't know because it's mounted on the fucking car. Right. It looked right and, before you started. And whatever we get is what we got because we, we only had an afternoon. And then, by the way, we had to reshoot that section because the shot was overexposed the first time. But, and there was actually glare. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, like you care, right? And then, <laughs> um, but the, uh, the shots were, um, we did have to reshoot it because... We had no, uh, no safety, and but we also did not have time to shoot it another way. So we had to mount that camera on the dashboard and say, "This is a play, guys. Action! Do the scene." And they did the scene four or five times, and and there is one take of the scene that worked. Everything else was a, a production shit show, not actors and performances, but just everything else was like the timing of things or. It's great. It, it we was, were running yeah, gun. Let's make we this were, happen. We were literally driving in traffic with our car with the camera mounted on the dashboard. And I want to say, there's a disclaimer. Do not have your actor drive and act at the same time. It is a safety. It, they could very. It's, you're distracted. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It made him more natural. It was like he was actually driving. Yes. <laughs> it, but it is dangerous, and I would ask people not to repeat that. Make sure. The professional way, which is why you should get the little money or know someone with the trailer, but you're supposed yeah, to have a yeah, car on a trailer. Yeah. And, you know. We were out in the elements. So yeah. every now and then a traffic light would stop. Would I stop was so them. scared. And, it, and it, wasn't perf it wasn't great for the scene. There's a couple of takes of that where they stopped it at weird spots and it didn't make sense for the scene to be paced out that way. So we just couldn't use those things. Anyway, there's a ton more stuff. I also that... had to do a lot of post prediction. Uh, anyway, sound design. Sound. Yeah, yeah sound I had to design. remove road sounds. Well, you from... have to do. You have to do that anyway. What um, are you complaining about? We didn't do I ADR. Let, I let you. People usually do. I ADR. let you do that. Like, yeah. it was fun. <laughs> By the way, that was fun for me, figuring out. I love solving. It's like, oh, the audio's crap and you can barely hear them? <laughs> Give it to me. Then what's oh. taking so long with our short films if you love doing it so it's much? Not, I'm... <laughs> I said before, I gotta get my shit together, man. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's that. We're gonna talk about all that stuff in, in uh, uh, gory detail later where we go into much more specific things on specific sections like 
casting and locations and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, as in case you didn't know, if you're not watching the live stream, um, we are now we added a video element to the show. Uh, film reverie doing we're doing what we call film reverie lives and yeah. uh, so the show you're listening to if you're listening to the audio podcast what you're listening to um was done live two or three days before you before it was released at, in podcast form so yeah. if you want to watch us live we are twitch.com slash super mega ultra int super mega ultra entertainment is the name of our studio or production company yeah. Um, so we stream those live and we always at least know a little bit in advance. We don't, we're not always sure exactly when, especially when there's a guest in, involved. We're not exactly sure of the exact time, but we try to at least announce or at least tweet out, yes. Hey, we're going live. But we also have, uh, Facebook, uh, what is it? A, com- a group? Facebook page and a Facebook group. So, right. So we want to build a, a community with our Facebook group and live. Yeah. We already have, we have a decent community going. Um, yeah. so the Facebook page is facebook.com slash film reverie. And then if you want to look for the group, which is invite, uh, you have to ask, you have to be yeah. clear to join, but we it, we'll do search it. for just Facebook. ask, well, you're, you know, you'll, just you're search for a uh, film every podcast on there and mm-hmm. you're, you're all good. Um, also, uh, again, we started our, we started an Instagram for the show, which is, uh, what is it on Instagram? It's film every podcast on yeah. Instagram. And people have, uh, we were surprised cause we've done yeah. things on Instagram before and we yeah. didn't get much of a response. Well, uh, the Instagram is like brand new. We'd never done a film reverie Instagram before because we sort of thought Instagram for a podcast. Well, right. But, yeah. yeah. What are we going to take pictures of? Or so far, all the pictures are pictures of you setting up a camera. <laughs> and strangely enough, no one's following that. No one, not, not, not many likes. Had- we How many had, likes on Brad setting up a camera? We had some views. <laughs> it's because you did a full shot. I'm best from here. You're, be- or you're, maybe- best, you're best from here up. Here, <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard to figure out which part is best because it's all bad. Um, but we're also on Twitter, uh, Film Reverie on Twitter, yeah. and uh, of course, I'm Becca Meyer. You're the, you're the Twitter person, I yeah. don't tweet, yeah, yeah, I'm terrible twi- tweeter, yeah. You're anyway, you're yeah. Becca Meyer, I'm Becca Meyer on Twitter, I'm Balding Ewok, yeah. And Instagram, I'm Becca Meyer. And we're we're Becca Meyer, Balding, you walk on everything. So um, that I think and is there all is we a want to film reverie or wait, yeah, we have a film reverie Twitter. I just said that. Oh, okay, and I just wanted. To, I was thinking. I apologize for the auto tweets from Facebook. I'm gonna take them off. I keep forgetting. <laughs> it's about damned. I'm good. I gotta go on Facebook <laughs> and say quit tweeting freaking facebook um and we did get our we did in fact if you're interested in going to any of our facebook page i forgot that for now while we're working on our new website we have the dot com forwarding to facebook yeah, so it's, it's a film every podcast.com will take you to our facebook page yes. where you can find the group and uh all that other stuff and you can watch old episodes and stuff like that yeah so I, think it, I think it's it um we are not exactly we're in sure. itunes and all that as well oh yeah of course if they're listening to us they know where to find right. us as a podcast but if you're not listening, that's true. If you're not listening and you're watching, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, all the... Spreaker all, is where Spreaker we, is where we host our, our stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, you can find us in all those places. Um, send us an email at filmreveriepodcast at gmail.com. Yes. And, tell, and, by the, yes, and since the website was down, we've had past episodes that uh, where we uh, have documents that we put up and say, download the document. Um, just email us and we'll send it to email us and ask us for whatever it is. And uh, well, until we have the website up, we'll email it. Yeah. So we're not exactly sure if we'll be back next week with a guest or if it's going to be us again. We're still working on trying to get a guest. We had a couple people lined up and they had to kind of, that'll be fun. Had to bail on us. I'm going to have to, uh, like figure out a way to switch control from here. Yeah. 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 Well, good luck with that. I'll be at work. Some kind of a screen share. I gotta figure out like a screen share thing so I could like you know cut back and forth. So one last thing we're gonna say before we go is this: what we were calling the season of. It seems weird to call it seasons, but there there are seasons. It is a season. But this this batch of episodes that we're working on now is. You need a break. We've only done one episode. No, not yet. I'm saying I need breaks. (laughs) We. 
<laughs> we and I think I did all the work on the last one. What the fuck are you talking yes, about? Yes, thank you. What are you talking about? Um, this batch of episodes, we're going to be concentrating on pre-production stuff for zero budget filmmaking, from our perspective. Um, but also, we're going to be premiering uh, a couple of our new short films. Uh, we have two short films that we mentioned in last and week's still episode. Need to work Manifest on, yeah. and Safe, but we're also building to. Um, we we're gonna do a, a live premiere on Twitch with behind the scenes with behind the scenes things. stuff yeah. of of all of those things, including our feature film, really pathetic and totally awkward, that we've spent so much time talking about. It's done. It's been done for a while. We are going to put it on Amazon, Amazon for rent yep. and purchase, uh, but we wanted to premiere it here first in our channel you know for people who are actually most likely yeah. to be interested in our people that have been listening to us for two years talk about making this thing um we figured we might for free give you guys an opportunity to uh to check it out before we put it up for sale yeah. now um those things would be the intention there is to be sort of like little telethons where we spend a couple of hours talking and talking about this and sort of trying to do some some kind of promotion or fundraising for our next film and the podcast in general so that's coming up in the next few months. We're not there yet. We're just getting started. But we will definitely be letting everybody know once we have decisions made and timing and scheduling and all that stuff. All that pre-production stuff we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. So yep, 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 yep. until yep. next time, I'm Becca Meyer. And I'm Bob and Ewok, and I we guess. Will go make something. <laughs> and the, the end? And cut. Film Reverie Podcast is a production of Super Mega Ultra Entertainment and is produced by Michael Beckemeyer and Bradley Kingston. If you're enjoying this podcast, please be sure to leave us a five-star review in iTunes and be sure to click like or subscribe wherever you find us. That's it for this time. We'll see you again next week with another episode of Film Reverie.